Hello everyone watching YouTube videos on their lunch break or when they just get into work or if you're, you know, at home unemployed watching YouTube videos. Uh, welcome back or welcome for the first time today. I don't have um, some low heat. Today I have some high heat and a different type of video. I wanted to d discuss today uh, Virgil Abloh, Off-White, collaborations, popularity, criticism, etc., etc. Um, but let's start with what I got in front of me. Um, uh, these are, you know, as you know, the Jordan 5 off-white, uh, sale colorway. I got these from a, uh, resale shop in, uh, Los Angeles, Pure Pandemonium. So shout out to them. I did a trade, trade and some cash on top to get these. I really, really wanted these, um, when they came out. Didn't hit, a, I signed up for every single raffle out imaginable, did not get them, and so had to pay a hefty price in trade and cash for these. Uh, but I am not disappointed. I really wanted these. I loved the uh, wolf gray colorway that came out during um, All-Star Weekend of 2020. Of course, didn't get those either. A lot of people prefer the gray ones. I like this um, colorway. I'm more of a light color shoe fan, but of any gray shoes, I would have liked to, <laughs> I would have liked those uh, Jordan 5s, the first colorway in these. Um, a lot of people, yeah, yeah, this is a little bit of a, a piss yellow. I get it. Um, if you want to call that, if it's not your vibe, uh, you're not into urine stained clothes or shoes, uh, I can, uh, there is an argument for that. That being said, these are so fire. Um, pun intended. Um, but yeah, I think eventually I'm going to, uh, wear these on dead stock these. And after, um, after a while I'm going to, uh, you know, after a decent amount of wears, I am going to cut out the holes in them and put on, uh, new laces to give them a little freshen up. And so they already kind of come, um, with that pre-worn vintage look but uh, that will spice them up. And that's what Virgil said is his intended purpose. And which brings me to uh, Virgil and, and some of that discussion. So he comes from an architecture background and that plays into the design of these with the holes. And uh, I can't speak to it properly, but that is uh, part of his uh, background and his thought process is this architecture background. And so many people, I think, I think it's, easy and popular now to criticize Off-White and Virgil. And I don't think a lot of thought is put into it. It's just like kind of like internet comments, you know, it's so easy to just type a few things and hit enter. And, and so uh, Virgil has become the popular band, the popular um, TV show or whatever. And it's just right. It, once, once something becomes super popular, it's easy to criticize easy to crit stand back and criticize without a ton of uh, thought put into it. I've seen numerous like, you know, people in the in uh in the let's say the blogosphere uh for lack of a better term, um be critical of of Virgil and some of it's rightly so with regards to certain design ideas etc um might not be completely original. Um, but he does come from the, like, you know, he states himself, he comes from that, that Duchamp mindset of just tweaking things 3%. And, you know, that can get you in a little hot water sometimes. And if there is any hard evidence of plagiarism or copying, um, obviously that's not cool. Um, that being said, I think he off weight and everything just gets a lot of heat just because everyone likes it and it resells for a lot. And as soon as something happens like that, um, uh, people are, you know, it's, it's trendy to just be off something. Um, so that's, that's, that's a recent pickup of mine. I'll just show you quick. My other two, my other, I have three other pairs of off whites. Um, these I picked up from round two, uh, for a decent price. These blazers, I love the all hollows Eve blazers. Um, they, uh, I, I, they're some of my favorite blazers and, uh, I don't think I'd ever get rid of these. Well, Maybe, but these, these actually, the blazers are actually a little bit more affordable now. I always recommend buying expensive shoes, um, not dead stock, except of course I got these dead stock as I say that, but, uh, you get a massive discount if they're worn. Uh, so I, that's what I did with these and you can find those for pretty, um, 
as far as off-white collabs are concerned, affordable. I got these retail, I hit it on an undefeated raffle, local raffle, back when they had local raffles and not nationwide raffles that got just eaten up, uh, the entries eaten up by bots. I got these from an undefeated raffle um, back before sneakers exploded. It was on the rise, but it hadn't exploded, exploded. So I haven't worn these yet. Um, this was the first pair of Air Force Ones I ever bought. And uh, eventually someday I'll wear these. Again, bright, flashy, not for some, but um, I like bright and flashy. And so I will wear these at some point for a special occasion um, or to undead stock them. Um, and uh, yeah, that was great, man. Everyone remember back when there were like local raffles, you could actually hit on them. Um, those were the days. And then my last pair is I bought these also from round two for a decent price. Um, they, someone had clearly worn these like three times and the last time was to the club and just turned them in for cash. And so I got these at a decent price, took them down to Jason Mark um, in downtown LA, got them cleaned up uh, for 25 bucks and seriously probably added a hundred over a hundred dollars of value to them because if they were this clean after Jason Mark, they, I wouldn't have probably been able to afford these at the time because uh, they definitely added value. Um, so these, this is what I'm talking about. This is like, you know, it, you wear these, some people you get a nod, younger people might get a nod. Some people you get an eye roll. Um, I think it's just, uh, you know, it's crazy what um, he's done to the industry and and I think that deserves a little bit of credit and respect. And uh, just because something's so hype, he's got to the point where things are so hype, they become less hype, right? So you see these worn, and again, maybe some younger kids might give you props, but some some people might, you know, give you an eye roll. And they just don't know um, for the whole entire industry to copy his deconstructed aesthetic. I mean, that uh, you, again, you got to give him some credit um, uh, there. Um, I'll continue on that, but I wanted to show you uh, the books first. So I picked up this a while back. Um, this was his first book. I got this at Skylight Books, uh, independent bookshop in uh, like the Silver Lake area. I'll just flip through it really quick. This is a, just a collection of his, his, his previous projects and works. The Watch the Throne um, album cover, uh, some of his uh, Pyrex Vision work. Um, and so this, yeah, this, this reminds me of why, um, I, you know, I think he gets ripped on a little too much is that People look to like, oh, well, he just came up under Kanye's, uh, on Kanye's coattails. Well, he, you know, he was discovered at, um, I think a print shop. I don't know. This is well documented. You can look it up by like Don C helped design some things. So it, it's through his personality and some of it was luck, but, uh, you know, Kanye is not going to take you under his wings if you're a douchebag and have zero talent. So, I mean, some of that's him. Uh, you can point to stories where I'm self-made, I got promoted, et cetera, et cetera. But at, at the end of the day, you can work as hard as you can and be as talented. Someone above you had to recognize it and give you credit. So you owe something to whoever promoted you. Um, uh, something. It's not all you all the time. Whether you start a business, you got some startup money from somewhere. Uh, you got to give them credit. So again, he came up with Kanye's uh, group, but it was... all. All of it, that was all him who uh, fostered the connections, built the friendships, uh, helped uh, design, collaborate, etc. And then you know he left um, that group and then continued to be successful on his own and became the artistic um, director for um, you know menswear at Louis Vuitton. And so all that that uh, is more than just uh, connections. So. Uh, again, I think he deserves a little bit of uh, credit in that regard. And now there's, yeah, one, one, one thing that I don't love is that like his, his ultimate muse is Michael Jackson. Um, but, you know, that's understandable. He's like uh, Virgil's 40. Uh, he grew up in a time where Michael Jackson was the biggest, uh, you know, pop star, rock star, black 
entertainer in the world. And so, I mean, a lot of people still love Michael Jackson. Just, I think there's enough out there where, um, you know, maybe Michael Jackson shouldn't be idolized. Um, so that's one critique of mine. Um, so I haven't gone through this book enough, uh, but I need to. And then, so I recently picked up this. I'm a little late on this video. I should have done this right when I got it. I got this also at Skylight Books. Um, but you know, I'm lazy and uh, I should have made this video earlier. I just never got around to it. So a part of my, okay, full disclosure now, now that I've gotten through all that, part of my bias towards Virgil is that, again, he's kind of from my age group, age group. he's a little older, but he went to my, he grew up in uh, Rockford, Illinois, not too far away from Wisconsin, where I grew up. I've been to Rockford. He went to school at uh, the University of Wisconsin, um, where I went to school. Uh, so one of his first off-white, <laughs> not one of his first, but a collab in the earlier days of off-white pre prior to Nike was with the uh, University of Wisconsin bookstore and uh, Champion, and he made these shirts. These are some of the most expensive shirts I've bought. Uh, I have another one that's in the laundry because I wear it, um, but uh, these both these shirts cost me like $100. And that's the most I've paid for a t-shirt ever. I'm not disappointed with it because I missed out on these. These came out in 2015. I was not at school then, completely missed out. I wasn't really following Off-White or Virgil back then. So missed out, had to pay eBay prices. But for an expensive t-shirt purchase, I am not disappointed with. Um, that's what you spend money on t-shirts when it really is uh, cool or means something to you. Uh, so yeah, he went uh, to Wisconsin uh, for civil engineering and then he went on to the uh, Illinois Institute of Technology for his master's in architecture. And so I, I think that backstory is cool. Um, his parents are immigrants from Ghana. And uh, yeah, as a black uh, artistic director for Louis Vuitton, I mean, uh, all of that stuff, there's a lot of adversity there that uh, he overcame. A lot of his references that influence him. Um, again, he, he's kind of my age group, so I always vibe with those references that he throws out there from skating to bands to music. Um, so I think that's cool. So obviously I'm biased towards that. And he's he's free about knowledge. There are numerous, there's a couple lectures he did at colleges. Harvard's one of them. Um, I'll link them in the bio of just kind of like free information. He's big on putting free information out there, open sourcing his, his craft. So again, for all the accusations of plagiarism, he freely puts out his methods. Um, recently on his IG, he put out, um, he put out kind of like a how to guide. I'll also link that of how to create a brand and then make product. I think that's awesome. And then um, back when he was blowing up, that was one thing I was a little critical of him for is like being so huge in his philanthropy efforts really not being either talked about or there. And But recently he did, um, this, he created the scholarship fund, which is cool um, uh, for uh, black students in the arts. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not black, but uh, it would be cool if it was minorities, uh, all encompassing. But I think, you know, the spirit of it is there. And I, I, I agree with that. So just wanted to flip through this really quick for if, if you were on the, on the uh, cusp of buying it, wanted to see what it looked like. So this is all of his various off-white uh, Nike projects. That's what this book is. I haven't really flipped through it yet. But um, these... Uh, what does everyone think? If you're still watching, what does everyone think? Um, will these be more than the UNCs that I have? Less? Um, the Chicago's are just uh, insane right now. The prices on these, and especially for how easily the toe box wears away, I think I I just rather spend that money on a pair of um, ninety four Chicago's or uh, eighty five Chicago's. Um, it's crazy. The amount and I'm you know obviously I'm an off-white Virgil fan I just think the prices on these are just insane um, so yeah uh, what uh, so in conclusion what are your guys's 
thoughts about uh, Virgil and Off-White and what is your favorite pair of Off-White Nikes? Uh, is it from the 10? Is it newer stuff? No one liked the track stuff. I also like that he's outside the, you know, outside the box uh, thinker. He doesn't just do the popular stuff over and over. He did that whole women's track line. No one liked it. Uh, really, you can get that stuff for retail under retail still. Um, I've gotten a couple pairs and sold them or traded them. Um, might still get a pair down the down the line. But oh, this is cool design process on the Prestos. Everyone loved the Prestos. I used to own a pair of Prestos back in the day. Uh, but these, this is one pair where getting them uh, used. Uh, it depends on how used because these these fall apart quickly, um, or get beat quickly. Um, so yeah, I think it's, this is a dope book. Um, if you're a fan, um, I recommend getting it. It's a cool coffee table piece. Uh, what are you guys' thoughts on coffee table books? Just dust collectors or uh, they were something worth getting. Anyways, I like it. Uh, I don't like when books are this thick though on the spine. It's kind of weird how the, the glue, you know, you could like crack it. You gotta be like gentle. Um, I love the Serena uh, 97s. Um, this video is going really long. No one's watching. So I'm going to end it here. Uh, but yeah, please like and subscribe. Forgot to say that. Classic.